Thank you very much indeed. I don't know whether my PowerPoint will come up in a moment, but I'm just going to uh, uh, talk generally, because I had a clip from the Daily Mail. I know that earlier on we had a Guardian editor here, and I thought well, I'd correct the balance by having a clip from the uh, <laughs> Daily Mail, um, just to, uh, to get a bit of a balance. And what that slide show is that there is a dilemma in primary care between certain patients saying that they do not have enough sufficient access to their GPs, and GPs saying, you know, we are working longer and longer and longer hours. And this is quite an awkward situation uh, to be in. It's an awkward situation to all of us, particularly if we have infirm um, relatives, like my father who is 94, and I seem to spend a lot of time moving in and out of, uh, of primary care, <laughs> and hospitals with him. But um, what I want to talk to you about today is the fact that um, um, we have got different projects, like Claire's project, and I'm sure Eileen's going to talk a bit more. And there it is. Um, Eileen's going to talk about more some of the things that Second Step do. We have in Bristol a rich culture, a rich resource of projects coming forward trying to address people's needs, their mental well-being needs. And I'm interested in this. I'm interested in social prescribing. It's very interesting that this year we've had two big King's Fund reports. The King's Fund look at issues associated with health. The one report was better value in the NHS, and this report has called on doctors, nurses and other staff to engage in a new mission to deliver better outcomes at lower cost. And it highlights all the productivity issues that the NHS is facing, with fewer returns for greater investment. So that is a bit of a problem that we all face, and we face that in Bristol as well. We also had a report only in the news last week, and we're talking about mental health today, and that is about uh, mental health under pressure. Mental health under pressure. And it talks about how the mental health services are struggling to cope with increasing demand. Increasing demand. Um, it, is estimated that, uh, uh, it is estimated that one in 15 people will suffer from a mental health issue at some point in their life that needs to be addressed by services. But this is an underestimation. People who work in, um, in primary care, people who work on the frontline communities, come across issues that are often unspoken. And this is where social prescribing comes in. Social prescribing comes in because doctors, like Dr Frank Weber, um, who's a GP in the medical centre in Dundee, who set up a social prescribing um, uh, project at his surgery 10 years ago, almost before Sam Everton did his in Bromley and Bow. And he said, I set it up because I have to face heart sink patients. What he meant by heart sink, he meant he couldn't do anything about it. He estimated that a third of the patients that come through his door are patients who have problems that he cannot address. These are, could be social, for example. And, and as such, he sought alternative ways of trying to address these. And in Bristol today, there are exciting projects that have evolved that GPs are referring into. These are often funded by third sector organisations, voluntary contributions, and some uh, public health funding. What is social prescribing, um, I hear you say? Well, here are a few definitions. Um, if you want to know what I think, I've written a report on it, but there are different <laughs> types, and I'm not going to bore you with that. Just simply to say, it is simply about trying to grab a non-medical alternative to address well-being issues. A non-medical alternative would be something like what Claire's just shown us in her video. But why is it important now? It's important now because there is an ageing population. Um, with an ageing population, it is estimated that there will be a 5% increase in GP consultations over time. The burden of mental health is getting bigger and bigger, and in England alone, this costs 105.2 billion a year in terms of medical and social care costs. And what's more, 
primary care is in crisis. Claire Gerarda, uh, who was the former chair of the Royal College of General Practitioners, reported another King's Fund study that said that 85% of GPs believe their service is in crisis, 50% think they can no longer guarantee safe patient care. Most GPs are seeing 40 and 60 patient consultations each day. And most GPs predict that the patients will have to wait longer for an appointment in the future. It is clear also that our anticipation about what the health service can deliver gets greater. Yeah? Uh, Sam Everington, who runs uh, one of the most famous uh, social prescribing projects, says patients coming through the door today are demanding ever and better and more improved services at a time when we, we cannot really have all the resources to deal with it. That's why I feel that social prescribing projects are important. They come in different types, different styles. I'm just going to show you this picture here, because I know we're talking about the city, but this is in the city, and this is a community garden project, a community garden project that involved many people referred there, not just, sorry, not just by GPs, but a variety of different organisations. And one person, because I've spoken to many individuals who have enjoyed the benefits that social prescribing can, uh, can have for them, uh, one person who um, had been itinerant uh, for many years, had managed to get into housing, and I know Eileen will talk about probably projects like this, uh, got into housing, and to overcome his social and emotional and addiction problems, he got involved with this socially prescribed community garden, part funded, uh, uh, by a third sector charity. And this is what he said about working in a community garden with fellow people who travelled the journey. <laughs> it's great to be here, to be around normal people. I've spent, I have spent 20 years or so surrounded by drug addicts, alcoholics and criminals, you name it. But coming here to the garden, being here, I have a chance to be normal. I feel that social prescribing projects can help address the balance between mental health and physical health to improve all their well-being. And I'm pleased to say that in Bristol there are some very exciting projects doing this. Thank you. <laughs>